Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a candle tutorial. You guys love my candle tutorial. So today I thought I'd do one where I mix resin and candle making together. So make sure you stay tuned. So I know you guys are probably all wondering how I can combine resin and candles together and well I had this idea from looking at one of those old cups that we all used to have that used to have like the water inside with the glitter and you would shake them upside down and that's kind of how I came up with this idea and then when I actually had a look to see if anyone else had done it a few places had done it it's all over Pinterest um, so you're going to need a few jars or glasses, whatever you want to use to put your candles in. So you're going to need one big one and one smaller one. And we're going to be putting them in like this. And then you're going to need the items that you want to put in your resin. So I'm going to do one with flowers and one with glitter just to show you the difference. But you could do whatever you wanted. Um, as long as it's a dry material, you can literally place whatever you want into the resin. And then you're also going to need some wicks, your candle wax and any scents or oils that you want to fr fragrance your candles with. So the first step is to mix your resin. So today I am using a casting resin, which is a two to one ratio. Casting resin is great for this project because it gets less bubbles. I also let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes just so that way all of the bubbles would rise to the surface and I'm going to get less. Now I'm just going to pour that in a really thin coat into the bottom and then after I've got that coat on I am going to add my smaller glass jars into the center of my large glass jars. The one tip I did pick up along the way by doing this is I should have put some weights into these small glass jars because they did float slightly when I put them into the resin. I thought they'd be heavy enough that that wouldn't be an issue but they did rise up slightly and went a tiny bit lopsided. So if I was to do this project again, I would put some like little stones or pebbles into the jars so that way they were nice and heavy and weren't going to move when I started placing my pieces around it. For my first resin candle, I'm going to be doing a botanical theme. I am just using up some old dried flowers that I had lying around from old projects. This is a great way too to use up all of those little bits and pieces of dried flowers because you only want to use small parts in this. You don't want any big flowers because it's just not going to fit in well. And because the flowers were quite like good size, they actually, when I started placing them in around the jar, they kind of held themselves into place, which was really handy because if you've ever worked with flowers before and resin, you would know that flowers float in resin. So by doing um, this and wedging them in between the candle, they actually stayed put quite well and didn't float when I did start to add my layers of resin into this. Then for my other resin candle, I decided to go for a really fun sort of party look. This is really reminiscent of those cups that I was talking about that I think every child of the 90s had one of those. So I'm just adding, I guess you could call this glitter. I found it at a craft store and I thought it looked really interesting. It's not quite glitter, but it's also not quite confetti. For this one, they did float quite a lot. So this one I would recommend doing in stages um, with the resin because some of it just went all to the top and you can kind of see it when you do see the finished project like the different stages. So I'd recommend um, with your confetti side to do it in multiple levels. So I just filled these about halfway up for the first pour. I don't want to go too deep because the deeper you pour your resin, the hotter it gets. And I didn't want it to crack uh, the glass or expand too much or contract too much. So therefore I decided to do it in stages. Then once I left it for about five hours, I poured my second stage and then added some more flowers and some more confetti. The confetti side was a little bit harder because it loved to float. So here I am just trying to get it to go back down when the resin started to thicken. And it did accidentally put some little micro bubbles in by doing this. I, if I was to do this again, I'd do it in four pours. So this has just been done in two. I would highly recommend if you're going to do anything that's really like light and floaty like glitter or confetti, probably best to do it in like four pours for something this deep. 
So now my resin has fully set and it's time to do my candle pouring apart. So you're going to need some wax and some wicks and whatever like essential oils or essences you want to use to fragrance your candles. But these have turned out really cool so far. So let's go and do some pouring. There's a few items that you're going to need to do this second step and that is you're going to need some wicks so you need to go for a small wick size if you are using a small container size um, otherwise you're going to burn through your wax just too fast because the wick is going to get too hot and burn that wax up too fast but the good thing about this is because we are pouring our own candle but as soon as we run through the first candle you just need to mix it up again and make a second candle so you can keep this you don't need to chuck this out or redo it each time you just need to pour wax and add a new wick in and then you've got a brand new candle that you can keep reusing then I've got some wax this is just a soy based wax that has been designed for containers there are so many types of wax out there when you go online whether you're shopping on Amazon eBay or any of the candle supplier places just read the description about all the different types I personally prefer soy wax because it's clean burning um, it has no parabens in it and it's also really easy to work with and this soy wax has been developed to work in containers there are some soy waxes that have been developed to work as freestanding candles and this one um, just needs to be heated up to 180 and then I just need to let it cool down to 135 before I pour it. The first step for candle making is to measure out your wax so I've got my soy based wax and the way I like to measure it out is I get the same size jar and I just do two lots of that and when that melts down it makes the perfect amount for your jar. There are also uh, different like maths equations that you can use to work out how much wax you need for what size container you want but honestly I find this the easiest way to do it and I get the correct amount every single time. Then I just place my soy wax on a double boiler method. What this is, is I've got hot water in my pot and then I've got a stovetop safe glass uh, bowl on top and I'm melting the wax this way. This just means that like the wax isn't going to heat up or cook too fast by doing it this way. And it lets me get up to my desired temperature, which is 190, which lets my wax expand. And then I need to get it down to 130 before I add my essence or fragrance or uh, essential oils in depending on the smell that you want to go for. So now I am just putting my wick stickers on. So these just stop your wicks from floating up when you do place your wax in your containers. These are super helpful, but if you don't have these, you can always do a little bit of hot glue or a bit of double-sided tape. Uh, there's, or some people do put a little bit of uh, wax down, let it dry, and then pour their wax on. There's multiple ways that you can do this, but it just stops your wicks from floating up in your container. Now I'm going to be using the Salted Caramel Essence and this is from Candle Supplies and I want about 6% to my amount of wax. Sometimes you want more, sometimes you want less. It depends on how strong your fragrance is and I'm adding this in at 130 degrees before I pour it in to my resin candles. I like to just give my wax a really good stir after I've added my fragrance in, just making sure that it does combine properly throughout all of the wax, and that way I get a really beautiful smelling candle. And then I just like to pour it into a jug because this is just going to make it easier to pour out into my candles, especially with this style of candle because I want to obviously pour it on the inside, and I need to be a bit more careful when I do do that. As you can see, I got the perfect amount of wax for these candles, so my little trick does work with measuring out. Then I grabbed my skewers, so these are just normal ones that you make kebabs with, and I just wrapped my wick around it. This just stops your wick from moving around and make sure it stays center while your wax is cooling down and setting, because you don't want to have a wick that is slightly lopsided. And also too, it doesn't matter if your wick does break a little bit for where it's wrapped around, because as you can see now, I am just cutting it off about I guess like two centimeters above where my base of my wax is.
How great do these look? I am so happy with how these have turned out. Please let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on these resin candles. The scented caramel scent that I went with, honestly, my house smells so amazing. I cannot wait to burn these. These are perfect for like table decorations or on your bedside table as they are super cute. And don't forget you can keep reusing these once the candle wax does burn out because now you know how to make your own candles and you can just keep replacing them. If you're new to my channel, please give this video a big thumbs up as it lets YouTube know to show this video to more people. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that way you get notified every single time I post a new video, which is once a week. So don't forget to hit the notification bell. And yeah, just let me know your thoughts on these in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching.